I'm Andrew Cobrin and I am the SEO specialist here at MFG Tribe and I'm here to talk to you a little bit more about what search engine optimization is. Never thought I was going to necessarily be an SEO. I didn't really even know about it. What I was looking for was definitely in the marketing industry specifically. SEO is really all about the numbers and data. And then once you have that, you come up with creative new ideas on what to do with those numbers and data. An example of that would be keyword research, where you look up the numbers and see how many people are actually searching for that word specifically. Once you take those numbers and really figure out which keyword you really want to hone in on and target, you have to come up with a real creative idea of what to do with that keyword in the content related to the website. A keyword would be anything you type search in for Google. So let's say, you know, you're looking for new shoes or specifically running shoes. You want to find the best ones. What are the best running shoes? There's your keyword right there. Now that you have your keyword, you got to find which page and what part of the content you want to use it deliberately. And you really want to focus on that because you don't want to overdo the keyword as much. You really want to make sure you only use it naturally and that it flows with the content specifically. This is a valuable tool, SEO specifically, because Everyone wants to be on page one of Google. Nobody really, really goes to page three or four of Google. So if you're not on page one of Google, you basically don't exist on the internet. And that relates to keyword research because once they type that in, you wanna make sure that you're the first thing that shows up on page one. Your struggles that come with it are usually around the bigger name companies that you have to take down that are always gonna be on page one, your big name conglomerates, as you can say. That's when it comes down to content. Content is key when it comes to keywords. You really wanna to focus to make sure it's exactly what the reader is looking for and exactly the information that they want to know. That way you can really have some space and some game inside the Google page when you're comparing to the conglomerates. The reason why content is so important is because that's how Google ranks you to determine whether you're on, you're on page one or not. That's why it's important to make sure you have content on your page that's relatable to the user's information, what they're searching for, and making sure that your keyword fits naturally with the content. Once you do that, Google will rank you higher, which eventually will lead you to page one. You gotta stay on top by constantly doing research. The data and the numbers never change. People are always searching for different things on Google. So you wanna make sure that you're always up to date on what the keyword research is. Wanna make sure you always know what people are actually searching for at the time, because it always changes. So a constant optimization. The work is never done with SEO. I've always kind of considered it as in you can never perfect SEO. You can only get better at it. You get better at SEO by staying up to date with the news. There's always a Google Core update every single year. There's always updates getting going out throughout, constantly throughout the months. And you want to make sure you're on top of what Google and other search engines are doing to make sure that you follow their rules and regulations of every year. The hard part about all of it is Google never directly tells you what they're ranking you for. They'll give you hints and ideas and tips of what, how to rank better, but it always comes down to the content needs to be perfect for the reader. And that's pretty much all they tell you, so you need to make sure your content is key. SEO was never my long-term goal. I was always in the music industry for about 10 to 15 years working for Austin City Limits. I was in charge of front of house. I made sure everything in front of the stage was taken care of. Security, ushers, ticketing, merchandise, stuff like that. The music industry was affected by COVID, which which I always had marketing in the back of my mind, so I really hit the ground running and really am happy that I did, which is how I discovered SEO by just networking and going through companies and figuring out which part of this marketing world fits me best. What I thought about SEO that I thought would make me a good fit was the fact that it's so left brain, right brain. It's, it's, I'm very good with numbers. I've always been good with numbers, but I really do prefer the creative side of it. So it was just a perfect mix to do both. I think that once you have the data mindset, while at the same time not focusing too much on the numbers, is when really what's going to make you get to the top of the pages. Well, another things you can do besides keyword research are other things like making sure your site is 100% healthy. You always want to make sure the problems are always being fixed and everything is tip-top shape. At the same time, another part of it is backlinking. You want to make sure that people are linking back to your site that trust your source. It shows Google that you're a very trusted source in the industry, considering that other people are linking back to your website. It basically means that other people trust your information and they want to share it on their own website, which is a big consideration of Google's authority based on your website. You want to have a really high authority. The best part of the job, I'd say at least the first part of the job, is when you start to target a keyword specifically and you see it start ranking to the pages. And especially when you see a keyword you're specifically focusing on make it to page one, it's definitely an accomplishment feeling that makes you want to do it for the rest of your life. Now that I told you a little bit about SEO, let's see some of it in action. Now that we're at my desk, let's go through little tools that SEO specialists like to use on a daily basis. Right now I'm in a program called SEMrush, which is probably every favorite tool of every SEO specialist. This is called Keyword Magic Tool, which is where you're gonna do most of your keyword research. I'm gonna use the example that we used from earlier. I'm gonna type in running shoes. 
Now, what this is going to give you is your monthly data based on the keyword research in search engines. So these are the keywords that are related to the broad match, which basically means that as long as it contains the word running shoes, it can be a little bit of anything. So in other words, best running shoes, best running shoes for flat feet, uh, tennis shoes, anything like that related to running shoes. Over here is where we have our volume, which is essentially the search volume that people are using that, searching that keyword in search engines per month. So as you can see, 201,000 people are searching that monthly for the keyword running shoes. To the right of it, we have the difficulty score, which is how hard it really is to rank for that keyword, which is where we went in with the conglomerate stuff. These are, the more broad it is, the harder it is to rank for those keywords specifically. One tip that I like to give people is you wanna find keywords that have high volume and low difficulty score which it can be a little hard to do, but there's always something that you can find to work with it. For example, we have white running shoes, high volume, low difficulty score. So that's probably one I would focus on targeting immediately. Once we can start ranking number one for those keywords specifically, and Google acknowledges that our authority based on those keywords, we can start ranking for the higher difficulty ones later on in your campaign. Once you've made your keyword selection, which you're gonna to try to limit down to about 50 or 100, but every site's gonna be a little different based on products you sell. Once you've got your keyword list selection, you're gonna enter it into your position trafficking, and SEMrush is gonna be tracking those keywords specifically and how it relates to your website, which is where I use this graph to track my keywords specifically. And now one thing to keep in mind is going down is good in SEO. You wanna rank number one, not number 100. So when you see that number's going down, that means you're doing good. Another thing we talked about was the backlinking, which is other sites linking back to your site. You always wanna stay on top of this and make sure you don't have any toxic websites linking back to your website. A toxic site is essentially a low authority score that Google determines is not the best site and could probably be a little spammy. And you don't want those linking back to your website. And you want to stay on top of it and make sure you disavow those whenever possible. Another one of my favorite tools in SEMrush is the keyword gap, which can show you how you're ranking with your, com your keywords specifically with your competitors, which you always want to stay on top of your competitors because that's probably most likely who you're going to be ranking up against. Some of the options that they have here is missing keywords, which is essentially keywords that your competitors are ranking for, but you're not. Then we have weak keywords, which are keywords that are not so strong in relation to your competitors and you, and are probably considered thinking about getting rid of those. Strong is the exact opposite, which is where we will find keywords that are probably going to be the most beneficial for your website in relation to your competitors as well. And then my personal favorite, the untapped one, which is essentially all the keywords that neither you or your competitors are ranking for. That's gonna give you the biggest advantage and biggest jump on your competitors. Now you've seen a little bit more tools than SEO specialists will use on a daily basis. Let's head back to the studio for the outro. So if you ever wanna know anything more about SEO, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. Make sure to like and subscribe to the Kyle Mylan channel, and we'll see you in the next one.